Hi friends, hope you are fine. In this video, let us understand six classes of enzymes with examples within 5 to 10 minutes. Nomenclature Committee of the International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology proposed a classification system of naming enzyme catalyzed reaction. This naming is based on the reaction catalyzed by different enzymes. According to this nomenclature committee, six classes of enzymes are there. The first one is oxidoreductases involved in oxidation reduction reaction. Examples include oxidase, dehydrogenase, etc. Second one is transferases involved in transfer of functional group between molecules. Examples include transferase, kinase, etc. Third one is hydrolases involved in hydrolytic reactions. Examples include nuclease, protease, lipase, etc. Fourth one is lyases that is involved in splitting up of molecules other than hydrolysis and oxidation. Examples are decarboxylase, aldolase. And the fifth class is isomerase that is involved in rearrangement of atom within a molecule like isomerase enzyme. And final one is the lycase or the joining enzyme that joins two molecules to form a new one. Classical example is DNA ligase. So we will be discussing each of these major classes with examples and examples are taken from familiar pathways like glycolysis, Krebs cycle, etc. for better understanding. Remember, these classes are further divided into subclasses. We are not going into that detail. So let's begin with oxidoreductases. As the term suggests, these enzymes are involved in catalyzing oxidation reduction reaction. Let's take an example. Step 6 of Krebs cycle. A dehydrogenase enzyme is involved. The enzyme is succinate dehydrogenase that catalyzes the reaction or oxidation of succinate to fumarate. So this is succinate that is oxidized to form fumarate. Here, as you see, the hydrogen is donated by this succinate, so it becomes oxidized. This hydrogen is received by this FAD that becomes FADH2. Here, FAD is reduced to FADH2. A reduction reaction has happened. The hydrogen is donated by this succinate. As hydrogen is donated by succinate, succinate is oxidized to form the fumarate. So oxidation reduction reaction are coupled. And the enzyme is called dehydrogenase as hydrogen is removed from succinate. That is why it is called as dehydrogenase, removal of hydrogen. So we will be discussing this oxidation reduction in terms of hydrogen, oxygen and electron in another video. Hope this much is clear. Then let's take one more example. The term oxidase is used in cases where oxygen is the acceptor, like glucose oxidase, cytochrome oxidase, monoamine oxidase, all are examples of oxidoreductases. Take this case of xanthine oxidase. Xanthine is oxidized to form uric acid. Here oxygen is the acceptor. Therefore, the term oxidase should be used as per the nomenclature committee. So if an enzyme is named as oxidase, it suggests that oxygen is the acceptor. Hope this much is clear. Often hydrogen peroxide, H2O2 or water is formed in this reaction. And the second class is transferases. As the term suggests, this enzyme is involved in transferring a functional group from one molecule to another. Let's take the step one of glycolysis. Glucose becomes glucose 6-phosphate. A phosphate is added to glucose molecule. So this is glucose, a 6-carbon compound. So this step is catalyzed by enzyme hexokinase. So ATP is providing phosphate to this glucose forming glucose 6-phosphate. As you see, 5, 6, 6 the position of glucose receives a phosphate from ATP. Therefore, ATP becomes ADP and the phosphate is donated 
to this glucose, glucose becomes glucose 6-phosphate. So a phosphate group is transferred from one molecule that is ATP to glucose, forming glucose 6-phosphate. Therefore, this enzyme comes under transferase and the enzyme is kinase. It's called as hexokinase as glucose is a hexose or a 6-carbon molecule. So transferases are enzymes involved in transferring a functional group like this reaction. Here phosphate group is transferred from ATP to glucose forming glucose 6-phosphate. The third class is hydrolases. These are enzymes that catalyzes the hydrolytic cleavage of COC and CC bonds or some other bonds. Classical examples include proteases that catalyzes the hydrolytic reaction that degrade protein molecules down to peptide fragments and finally forming free amino acids. Suppose this is a dipeptide that is hydrolyzed by a protease to form amino acid 1 and amino acid 2. Here the breakage of peptide bond has happened. So a protease is an enzyme that cleaves a polypeptide to its amino acid units. So there are many hydrolases like nucleases. We are very familiar with these two nucleases, restriction endonuclease and exonuclease. Endonuclease means hydrolytic cleavage within a DNA molecule, whereas exonuclease removes nucleotides from the ends or terminal regions by the breaking of phosphodiester bond. Other nucleases includes lipase, protease, nuclease, amylase, phosphatase, etc. Often, this hydrolases ends in ASE. And the next one is lyases. Lyases are enzymes that splits CCCO or CN bonds by forming double bonds or rings other than hydrolysis and oxidation. Let's take an example to understand this. So this is the step 4 of glycolysis. Fructose 1,6-biphosphate has formed and it splits to form two 3-carbon compound, a glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So this is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and this is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. As you see, the splitting is not a hydrolysis or an oxidation. Here, a double bond is formed. As you see, this aldehyde group CHO, a double bond is formed. Then here also, a ketone group C double bond O, a double bond is formed. So, splitting of molecules by forming double bonds or rings. Here, this 6-carbon compound splits to form 2,3-carbon compound. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is an aldose with an aldehyde group, whereas DHAP is a ketose with a ketone group. So this type of reaction is called as lyases, splitting of a molecule other than hydrolysis or oxidation. And the enzyme catalyzed this reaction is called aldolase. Other lyases include citrate lyase, isocitrate lyase, pectate lyase that is very common in plants, etc. And the next group is isomerases. Isomerases are enzymes that is involved in rearranging atoms within a molecule. Let's take the example of glycolysis again, the step 2 of glycolysis, where this glucose 6-phosphate becomes fructose 6-phosphate. Glucose and fructose are isomers. They are having the same molecular formula, but different structural arrangement or difference in arrangement of atoms. As you see, this is glucose 6-phosphate. So this is fructose 6-phosphate. The arrangement has changed, but both are having the same molecular formula, C6H12O6. Here, a rearrangement of atom has taken place within this molecule, forming fructose 6-phosphate. Here, fructose is a ketose, whereas glucose is an aldose with an aldehyde group. So simply, a rearrangement of atom has occurred, forming a new molecule, fructose 6-phosphate. Here the enzyme is phosphoglucoisomerase. So phosphogluco means the substrate name phosphoglucoisomerase. So isomerase enzymes are involved in rearranging atoms within a molecule. So this glucose and fructose are isomers having the same molecular formula but with different structure. 
Other examples include triosphosphate isomerase, glucose isomerase, protein disulfate isomerase, etc. And the final class is called lysis or synthetase. So these are enzymes involved in joining together two molecules with the hydrolysis of a diphosphate bond in ATP or a similar triphosphate. Let's take an example. The term synthetase is now not used and as per the nomenclature committee, the term synthetase should be avoided, a term which was used earlier. Now all the enzymes are called as ligases. Examples include ubiquitin ligases, that joins CN bond, then glutamate cysteine ligase, amino acyl tRNA synthetase, succinyl coenzyme A synthetase, etc. Let's take one example. So this is amino acyl tRNA synthetase. This is the enzyme for methionine. The function of this enzyme is to combine this tRNA to its corresponding amino acid, that is methionine. As you see, this is the active site of tRNA for methionine, and this is the active site of methionine. So ATP is used. ATP becomes AMP and 2 pyrophosphate. That energy is used to combine this tRNA to methionine, forming charged tRNA meth or charged methionine tRNA. So this enzyme catalyzes this reaction, combining tRNA to its corresponding amino acid or joining tRNA to its corresponding amino acid. So this is a ligase reaction or this is a ligation. Then one more example, cysteine and glutamate that is combined in the presence of glutamate cysteine ligase, forming glutamyl cysteine, which is the first step in the synthesis of antioxidant glutathione. Here you can see these two amino acids are combined or joined together by this enzyme, glutamate cysteine ligase. And finally, the classical example that is the DNA ligase, so as you can see, these are two DNA fragments and these two DNA fragments are joined by ligases by the formation of phosphodiester bond and the process is called as ligation. That is widely used in recombinant DNA technology for making sticky ends or add linkers or adapters to DNA or repairing nicks, etc. So we have given a video on enzymes in recombinant DNA technology. You can refer that for more. If you find this video useful, Please consider subscribing this channel. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologicsumsforyou.com.